In a previous unit, we talked about the periodic trend of atomic radius. And now since we're talking about ions, which changes the ratio of the protons to the electrons, uh, I really thought it would be really important to talk about how ionic radius can change from atomic radius. Now we know that there's a trend in the atomic radius, but I wanna kind of talk about how that changes when we're considering ions. So real quickly, let's just bring up one quick little example. Here is sodium. Now I've done a couple things for you already. I have drawn for you just a very quick planetary model. So it's a representation of the electron configuration that you see above, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. The valence shell in this case would be identified as the third shell. So there's only one valence electron, 1s little electron in its third shell. That's the valence shell. So when sodium becomes an ion, it has one of those two choices to make. It can either lose that one valence electron or gain seven. And of course, the easiest thing for it to do would be to lose that one little s electron in its third shell, get rid of it completely. So as an ion, its electron configuration is actually 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. But what does that do to its structure? So we quite literally removed a valence electron. So that little blue sphere that you see circling around the outside, well, that's gone now. So when sodium becomes an ion, when it loses that valence shell, it quite literally loses the whole shell, not just that one little uh, electron. The shell is gone. You can clearly see what's happened to its radius. It has simply gotten smaller. Why? There's just less shells there to be dealing with. Now, this tends to be true for most positive ions as well. Since positive ions tend to lose their valence shells, you will tend to see all positive ions being smaller than their atomic counterparts. Let's take a look at some other things here. I think we need to kind of really understand the why. Why, in fact, are these things becoming smaller? Well, it could be simple. You can keep it simple and just say there is simply less shells, less shells, less space. They have to be smaller. But let's boil it back to one of those two atomic forces. Uh, in this case, less shells means that there's less shielding. Less shielding now between the new valence shell, which is now shell two, and that nucleus. That nucleus is more easily able to hold on to that valence shell and pull it down toward itself. So the whole size of that ion should shrink down. Let's take a look at another example. Here's both oxygen and fluorine. We're gonna do two here side by side. In both cases, you should recognize that the valence shell is shell two. Oxygen has six valence electrons. It can either gain two or lose those six. Fluorine has seven valence electrons in 2s2 and 2p5. Seven valence electrons, it can either gain one or lose those seven. It's gonna choose, of course, to gain one. So we're gonna add on the requisite number of electrons to those lovely electron configurations. And you'll notice they end up being the same. Now, do you remember the term for what the same electron configuration means? That's right, isoelectric. So they are now isoelectric. I'm gonna go ahead and modify the structure. So I just added in a couple purple spheres to represent the electrons I just added in. Now, it might not be as obvious as to what's going to happen to the overall size of the atom. It's not as dramatic as what you saw with that positive ion formation. We didn't lose a shell here, so we didn't automatically get smaller. So let's really kind of use our noodles here. We know that size has a lot to do with the relationship and the attraction for the electrons to the protons in that nucleus. So I think it might be a good idea to compare the number of protons to the number of electrons. So they have the same number of shells. So it's important to note that the electron shielding here does not change. So that can't be part of our argument for explaining why the size of oxygen as an ion and fluorine as an ion changes. This must be an effective nuclear charge style of argument. And again, we really need to be looking at the relationship between the protons and the electrons. So let's list them for each of these elements. 
So for oxygen, I will have eight protons. Electrons now goes up to 10, because remember I had to gain two. For fluorine, you have nine protons. Electrons, again, you have 10. And that's because both of these species are isoelectric, stable with full valence shells now. Okay, so we can see that there's an imbalance between the number of protons and the number of electrons. And if you think about this like a tug of war, who's winning? Team electron, team proton is losing. So if team electron is winning, they're able to pull further away from the nucleus and therefore the size of those ions must in fact increase. Negative ions tend to be a little bit larger than their atomic counterparts.